Today on Gen Y, grad is in the air, so be sure to stick around to learn some makeup tips for the big night. On today's show. Smile? To wear blush or not. We find out at Casba Evolution. Quite a juicy pucker you got there. <laughs> also. Get your broom and get ready to sweep as we go curling. I fell down a lot when I first started. And time to get back in the saddle at Unicorn Stables. I want to continue riding for the rest of my life. See all this and more right now on Gen Y. Hello and welcome to Gen Y, a show by teens for teens. I'm Abby and I'm so looking forward to graduation. Today we're at Casva Evolution in Grandview Corners where we'll be learning some makeup tips so we can put our best face forward for graduation. But first we join reporter Lindsay with Teens and Horses at Unicorn Stables. down the grid and jumping the vertical we got to meet some enthusiastic riders and their best friends I'm here with Kaylin you have a beautiful horse Kaylin can you introduce us um, my horse's name is Oliver he is five years old and he's a Dutch warm blood thoroughbred I realized that horseback riding was something that I wanted to do about three years ago. I love the connection you feel between you and your horse. And then you get pushed, but I like the pushing feeling, the challenge. They don't even ride on their first lesson. They learn how to put all the equipment on and how to take care of that horse before and after riding. And when they come the second time for their lesson, they do that themselves with some help and then they get on the horse. So I think the relationship and getting to know how to move the horse around on the ground is a really important. I got my boots, I got my gloves, and I got my helmet. It's time to get on a horse. You ready? Yeah. Okay, go. Perfect. <laughs> we'll pop your foot in this stirrup here. Perfect, little finger out, thumbs on top. Perfect. Okay. Nice and tall with your upper body. Perfect, try and look up where you're going. That's it, that keeps your shoulders back. These riders shared that there are many benefits to horseback riding. I think it teaches like tall posture because you have to like put your shoulders back and sit on the horse and just like inner strength I guess. I think they keep you physically fit, um, so riding is quite a physical sport, teaches the kids the responsibility, looking after their equipment, caring for this really large animal, gives them confidence because they can handle these big horses, it, it, I think it really helps give them confidence and life skills. After being here today, I definitely want my own horse. Thanks to everyone at the Unicorn Stables, and if you want more information, check out their Facebook page and the website below. This is Lindsay, signing out for Gen Y. I want to continue riding for the rest of my life. I really like it. Look mom, I finally got my own horse. Thank you, Lindsay. That looks like a fun taping. Now, speaking of rare after-school activities, we bring you the sport of curling. Layer up, bring your broom and your slider, because today we are going to delve into the increasingly popular sport of curling. Uh, curling is an old Celtic game. It's played on ice. It's basically the same as shuffleboard on ice. Basic rules of curling, you try to get your rocks closer to the center than your opponent. 
the juniors here play in a regular Optimus Junior League. It's an inter-club league. Uh, usually we play in, in Cloverdale uh, and it goes on every Sunday. And there's teams from all over the Lower Mainland go there. There are also many benefits to curling. Uh, there are quite a few benefits of curling. Uh, it's a long, you can play it for a long, long time, start from age 10 to 90s. It's r relatively cheap. Uh, it's good for your good athletic uh, exercise for you. And it's a good social sport. We hear lots of yelling when someone releases a rock. What's that about? <laughs> That's about encouraging the sweepers to sweep harder. You, you do hear the term harder, harder all the time. Okay, that means you just want to go faster. I think teamwork is displayed through uh, communication between the third and the skip, of course, and the sweepers to let them know like if they missed a shot or if they made it and why. Sliding stones across the ice? This may sound easy, but we learned today there's a lot more skill behind this sport. The idea is here is I want the rock to go that way, so I'm going to turn it that way. And every time you turn it, you also want to end up at the zero position or 12 o'clock. Now it's time to put our skills to the test. So that's the ready position set. You just raise your hips, little step back, bring the rock back and push out. That a girl, well done. We learned today that in order to succeed at curling, persistence is the key. Most skips for this league probably put in about two to three hours a week minimum for practicing. So. Um, what would you say makes a good curler? What traits do you have to have? Um, well, you definitely have to be committed. Like, you can't just come the first time and then expect to do it. Like, mm -hmm. I, I fell down a lot when I first started, and, and it's kind of frustrating, but you just have to keep going. You should start curling because it's a sport that you can play your whole life long, doesn't matter how old you are. And it's good just to get out there, and it's a very social game, too. We learned today that curling is a lot of fun and quite a workout. If you would like some more information, be sure to check out the Peace Arch Curling Club website. This is Helen. And this is Lindsay. Signing, signing out for Gen Y. y. <laughs> Thank you, Helen and Lindsay, for showing us one of Canada's favorite sports. Now we're here at Casbah Evolution with Emily. Emily, what exactly is Casbah Evolution? Casbah Evolution is a beauty boutique in Grandview Corners and we specialize in professional skincare and makeup, as well as eyelash extensions and nails. We also do here the full body spray tanning and skincare if you're looking for any products to get ready for the big day. Tell me about what you do to your nails. Well, you can do them any way you want to. You can do like the French tip, which looks really elegant um, with your fancy dress, or you can match it to the color of your dress. It's basically just like a nice way to accentuate your hands. Thank you, Emily. Stay tuned because after the break, I'll be getting all glammed up. Also after the break, Lower Mainland grads give the message that tanning is out. And, it's time to do some cartwheels at Dreams Gymnastics. Gen Y will be right back. Dear children, the Bush Foundation of Canada, thank you for sending me Rory the Lion. That means I'm going to get my wish, and that makes me really, really happy. Yesterday he was sad, but I told him, it's okay, Rory, but we'll make two more needles until my wish. I will send you pictures from the top of the Rocky Mountains. Love, Emily. Imagine the difference a wish can make. 
Click on childrenswish.ca and give today. Welcome back to Gen Y. We're here at Kaz the Evolution with Abby. What a great name. Uh, Abby, what would you say the first step to getting ready for grad is? I would say definitely, without a doubt, skin that's fabulous and glowing is your best accessory. You want to start hydrating, exfoliate really well, but gently. And you can now is the time to try any new skin care that's going to clear up your skin if you've got any problems. Um, but I wouldn't recommend doing anything dramatic the week before because chances are you might have a reaction. If you're going to have a reaction, it'll be that time. What's the first step to starting your makeup? Well, now that we've got your skin moisturized, now we're ready for your base or foundation. And how do you know if you have the right color? Well, that's a good question. You always want to take three colors that you think could possibly work for you, and you want to swatch them beside each other underneath your jawline. That ensures that you're going to get a proper match without getting that geisha-like mask. So now that we picked the right color for you, now I can use that as your base all over, give you a nice smooth complexion. Yeah, we're good. So I've chosen a nice coral blush for you because you're wearing that beautiful coral dress and the coral in the blush is also going to make your blue eyes pop. So what I'm doing is taking a little bit of blush and I'm just going to go on the apples of your cheeks. The easiest way to find the apple of your cheek is to smile and you find that nice round spot right there, that's where we're putting that blush. So now when you're doing a bronzer, first of all you want to choose a tone that matches your undertone. So because you have that nice golden complexion, I've gone with a golden undertone which means that it's got a little bit more yellow versus pink. And what I do with the bronzer now is I go wherever the sun would naturally kiss you. So on the top of your forehead, down your nose, across your cheeks. So because this is a mineral makeup, what I do is I actually set it down with a hydration spray. So just close your eyes for me, deep breath in and hold it. So I take a little bit of my highlighting powders. While your skin is dewy, I just wrap it gently around your orbital bone. So what do you think? Oh, I love it! Yeah, that bronzer gives you such a beautiful sun-kissed glow. <laughs> now that my skin is perfected, it's time for my eyes. But first, Miguel will tell us why UV tanning is out. We recognize people in our school who, are, who would actually tan and who are planning on it, right? The Canadian Cancer Society is trying to raise awareness of skin cancer in teens through the Tan Free Grad Campaign. The Tan Free Grad Campaign is a peer-to-peer -peer based campaign where we work in secondary schools throughout the province to raise awareness about the dangers of indoor and outdoor tanning. And we're working with key student leaders within schools and they educate their peers on the dangers of indoor and outdoor tanning and collect pledges to be tan free for prom and graduation. We applaud the BC government for announcing that they will be prohibiting the use of indoor tanning for those under the age of 18. This is an important step towards protecting youth. Though the students are happy with the recent legislation that bans indoor tanning for teens, there is still more room for improvement. I think it's great that the government has decided to take action, and but I think that more can be done to ensure that everybody is aware of the dangers of indoor tanning and that everyone should know that no tan is a safe tan. Even though there's a lot of awareness about the dangers of tanning, it's clear that there are many who still just don't get it. I have some friends that will purposely go out in the sun and burn to, and then say, oh well, it'll turn into a tan. They're so into tanning, they're so into looking like someone on TV. It's, it's quite hard to change them, but a lot of my friends have changed to spray tanning, which is still a little bit awkward because you do want to be comfortable in your own skin tone but spray tanning is a cosmetic, so it's much better than indoor tanning. We learned that, despite your skin tone, you need to be careful. All skin tones can get uh, skin cancer, so they should all be cautious about it. Getting tanned isn't just temporary, it can really damage your skin, like, lifelong. So is there such a thing as a safe tan? There is no such thing as a safe tan. So we're encouraging people to own their own skin tone, embrace it, and love it and go tan free. 
Uh, if people are really wanting that bronze look or they're seeking alternatives, then they should look for safer options such as a spray tan or cosmetics. In high school, there's a lot of pressure to look a certain way and especially um, on top of that, the media has so much power over us and through their ads and um, lots of promotion of tanning through like shows like Jersey Shore, there's a lot of pressures to look tan and the idea that beauty is tan skin is so wrong and I think that's why this tan free grad campaign is so important. I definitely want to emphasize the fact that it's important to really just be proud of who you are and what you sort of have, like your skin tone and what makes you beautiful and just uh, recognize that. As you can see, the sun is out and summer's right around the corner. If you want to take the pledge to go tan free this grad, check out cancergameplan.ca. I'm Miguel signing out for Gen Y in Vancouver. Thanks, Miguel. I'm glad to see that teens are finally getting the message that UV tanning is dangerous. Now it's time for my eyes. One point that I want to emphasize is that if you've got an all-day event such as a grad, you want to make sure that you're using an eyeshadow base that will prevent creasing. Make sure that this is a silicone-based product that dries on contact. That way your eyeshadow will stay nice and smooth all day long. First, I pick a highlight color that's nice and light. Just pop underneath your eyebrow, highlight that brow bone. Carry that down into the inside corner for a wide-eyed look. The next step is your base. We're going to do sort of a, a soft, shimmery, smoky-ish kind of a look on you. Next step is your accent color. This is a beautiful bronzed pink. And that one's going to run through the crease like a rainbow. It'll just tie in with that coral lip we're planning on doing. And a great tip, when you're doing anything smoky or shimmery, throw a tissue underneath your eye to catch all of those falling dust particles. I'm just using a pencil liner. With a soft smoky, what I like to do is actually take a pencil, blend it right into the lash line with a small little brush. So the final touch for your eyes is a nice healthy lick of mascara. A nice little tip is to actually wiggle back and forth when you're applying it, especially if you've got a mascara that has fibers in it. That will align all the little fibers. So the final touch just to frame your eye is the eyebrows. For Abby here, all she needs is a little coat of clear eyebrow mascara just to tame them a little bit. There you go. Wow, thanks Abby. I can't wait to get my lips done. But first we're going to visit Helen who's at Dream Gymnastics where the motto is dream it, live it. Gymnastics is a unique sport that combines balance, strength, and flexibility. We jumped into Dreams Gymnastics in South Newton, Surrey to find out more. Dreams Gymnastics is a facility for kids of all ages and adults as well to come and uh, check out their skills. Uh, they work on flexibility, strength, endurance. It takes a lot of upper body strength. It takes a lot of core strength. Gymnastics is definitely a workout, but there are also many other benefits. The benefits of gymnastics are anything from your physical ability, um, building up your self-esteem and also building your, your brain, your, again, making your brain develop a lot better so you focus better, you concentrate better, you, you do, um, do better in school, it actually boosts grades. These talented teens even showed us a few of their tricks. Gymnastics is for all ages and all abilities and it doesn't matter how old or how young you are, you can come in and we will teach you the basics and we'll get you to where you would like to be. The girls know that gymnastics can be for everyone and they gave these words of wisdom. You should definitely join because you make lifelong friends and it's really hard work but it's also really fun. And do you have a message for any teens interested in joining gymnastics? Well, I'd say it's tough but it's worth everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and would you say gymnastics is for everyone to try? Yeah, you don't have to be a certain age or weight to do it. 
They can call us at 604-598-2596 uh, or they can email us at dreamsgymnasticsinc at telus.net or they can check out our website at www.dreamsgymnasticsinc.ca. This has been a dream for me, so that's why the Dreams Gymnastics idea for the name. I've been coaching for 12 years and it's just something I've been wanting to do. I was in gymnastics as, in high school as a competitive gymnast and um, I've just loved the sport and I just want to bring it to all those out there that uh, have an interest in it too. All right, I had seen enough. I was ready to roll into action. Okay, so same thing, both feet together, grab the beam with both hands, push with both hands and feet, tuck your chin in, keep your body squeezed tight, and roll, look for the end of the beam. Woo! <laughs> Good job on the balance beams, Helen. Today I've been at Casba Evolution learning about how to perfect my look for grad. After the break, we'll be choosing the perfect lip gloss to go with my dress. Also after the break, an eco-friendly project using old street banners. Gen Y will be right back. I think the Sea to Sky Trail is very unique in the fact that people with different disabilities, different levels of disabilities, uh, maybe not even disabilities, maybe someone with a stroller or uh, someone who just has a hard time walking. Just having a trail of this extent going through the wilderness the way that it does, we never get to see that anywhere and we never get to use something like that anywhere. But you don't have to be disabled, but just to be out with your friends, your family, it's so important and it's so rewarding. kids. We are brave. We are strong. We are fighters. Some days are good. Some days are bad. Some of us make it. Some of us don't. My wish will make me strong. The Children's Wish Foundation of Canada. Does a wish make a difference? You bet. You bet. Imagine the difference a wish can make. On my tomb my needles tell my wish. Please give today. Today's generation of young people spend the least amount of time outside of any generation in human history. We need to have children out, we need to have people out in order to see the world around that allows us to live. I think something like the Sea to Sky Trail is the epitome of what we need to get people back out into the real world, to see nature as it can be, and something that we are a part of and that we must fight to protect. Welcome back to Gen Y. We're here at CASB Evolution in Grandview Corners getting a great look for grad. Next we'll see SFU students teaming up with high schoolers transforming banners into something useful. At SFU Surrey, sustainable fashion was on display as local high school students were recognized for their hard work in giving used city banners a new life. Banner Bags is a uh, student-run program through SFU uh, where we take used banners from cities and companies who are no longer using them and would otherwise go to the landfill and we bring them to high school sewing classes where they're made into bags. We started with a couple schools in 2009 and today we're in you know, over 20, 30 schools in the Lower Mainland. Oh, fantastic. Uh, so. Though Banner Bags is in over 30 local high schools today, success was not easy to achieve. Because banners, is, uh, people take them down seasonally or annually, um, you have to get them the very right time. And so my first 50 calls, rejection, 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 no, 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 uh, until we struck one lucky break with the Downtown Surrey Business Improvement Association. The city of Surrey has donated a lot of banners to us, uh, as well as Chinatown, Granville Island, uh, 
We've got a lot of cities involved, so none of them go to waste. Banner Bags reaches out to the local community by hosting workshops at high schools. We basically challenge students to think outside the bag. Some students are creating, one student made an umbrella cover, uh, a lot of students are making jackets or dresses. Basically, uh, the theme being something useful and turning something of no value into something of value. It's nice to just recycle them and not that they get thrown into the garbage. What I've done is I've taken city banners from Coquitlam and put them together as um, a bag that has two functions. You flip it over, take your towel, and then roll it up. You can close these. You have your towel just like this, and you still have your hands free and can take other stuff. Tonight's showcase also resulted in a $500 scholarship for one lucky designer. Being a textile student, you waste a lot of fabric when you work on stuff, but might, why not work on something that's already made? We have converted around 1,400 pounds of nylon and banners into bags. Wow. Um, so that is quite, quite a lot. Uh, actually. Nylon takes about 40 years to decompose in a landfill, so we've taken 1,400 pounds of that, and people are using them now uh, in the world. So, If you want to check out the list of tonight's winners or find out how banner bags can come to your school, check out their website. I'm Miguel, signing out for Gen Y in Surrey. Thanks, Miguel. That was a great story. Now we're back, and we're going to finish off my look by choosing my lip gloss. I think I like that one. Great choice. We're going to go ahead and line your lips with a pencil. So because we want to go super juicy, I chose a nice pink pencil. You don't really want to see too much of the lip liner. You just want to define the lips with it. And we're going to top that off with a lovely lick of gloss. Okay, you ready for the big reveal? Yep. <laughs> okay, here you go. Oh, I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. And I like the lips too. Quite a juicy pucker you got there. <laughs> well, that's a wrap of this edition of Gen Y here at Kaz Evolution. I'd like to thank my makeup artist, Abby Radcliffe. But before we go, do you have any last final tips for us? Absolutely. A couple of things that you can take with you in your little clutch. You want blot film to blot any shine that might pop up. You want your lips to touch up throughout the night. And if you're wearing false lashes, it might be a good idea to carry some emergency eyelash glue. Thank you for those tips, Abby. You're welcome, it's my pleasure. If you'd like to see more, check us out on YouTube. I'm Abby, signing up for Gen Y. Gen Y is brought to you by Options Community Services.